Okay, so now what will be the rules if the seller uh, choose right of stoppage in transit 2? <clears throat> Number one, kailan magiging available ito na rights ng seller? And how to exercise? So, kailan, when right is available? This right is available after the unpaid seller has parted with the possession of the goods in the buyer is or become insolvent. So, uh, rights of stoppage in transito class, uh, gaya dun sa example natin kanina, <clears throat> magiging available lang ito on the part of the seller kung si buyer naging insolvent. So, pwede niyan tawagan yung carrier na, okay, uh, wag nyo nang i-deliver kay buyer ito because the buyer becomes insolvent. E ngayon, uh, anong gagawin ni seller to how to exercise number by obtaining actual possession of the goods so pwede niyang bawiin muli yung goods actual possession next by giving notice of his claim to the carrier or other bailey in whose possession the goods are so o di kaya pwede siyang magbigay ng notice dun sa carrier na uh, wag mo na i-deliver it's because the buyer is insolvent so the possession of that or akin pa rin yan so notice next effect of exercise so what will be the effect kapag rights of stoppage in transit number one the goods are no longer in transit so hindi na magiging in transit yung goods next the contract of uh, carriage ceases the carrier shall be liable as the depository or other bailey. So, wala nang kontrata yung seller at saka nang uh, carrier. Kasi nga, wala nang i-deliver, wala na dapat i-deliver si carrier doon. So, si carrier na ngayon magiging depositary na lang. Or di kaya as if agent ng seller. <clears throat> Next, the carrier must re-deliver the goods or goods to or according to that instruction of the seller. So, ngayon, si carrier, ibabalik niya yung goods kay seller. Or di kaya, what if, <clears throat> ibenenta na seller sa iba? So, or maghihintay ng instruction si carrier from the seller. Next, when goods are transit. So, kailan siya magiging in transit? In transit. Number one, from the time they are delivered to the carrier, or other bailing for the purpose of transmission to the buyer until the buyer or his agent takes delivery of them from such carrier or other bailing. So, sa accounting nyo class, dito na, mag, uh, dito na papasok yung mga FOB shipping point nyo, FOB destination. So, pero in accounting class kasi, yung FOB shipping point at saka FOB destination is ginagamit lang yon para malaman kung sino yung magbabayad ng shipping cost. So, either the seller or the buyer. So, here, sa law kasi, dito sa law, uh, yung shipping cost is uh, on the part of the seller dapat. Next, if the goods are rejected by the buyer, in the carrier or other bailey continues in possession of them even if the seller has refused to receive them back. So, ito class, let's say for example, hindi tinanggap ni buyer yung goods. And then, syempre dapat si carrier, ibabalik niya yun kay seller. Diba? So, what if si seller, hindi niya tinanggap yung goods? So, the goods will become in transit. Next, when goods are no longer in transit, so kailan yung goods hindi daw in transit na? If the buyer obtains delivery of the goods before arrival at the appointed destination. So, ibig sabihin daw class, uh, si buyer naghihintay na dun sa destination kung saan i-deliver ni carrier. Next, if the carrier or other bailey acknowledge to the buyer or his agent that he is holding the goods in his behalf, after arrival of the goods at their appointed destination. So, dito class, yung goods is nakarating na dun sa location ng buyer. And then, si buyer, nagbigay na ng notice kay seller na nandito na, na dumating na sa kanya yung goods. 
And last, <clears throat> if the carrier or other bailey wrongfully refuse to deliver the goods to buyer or his agent. So, dito naman class, Article 1531, ang sinasabi dito, si carrier yung umayaw. So, ayaw niya i-deliver kay buyer yung goods. So, with that, ang effect niyan, the goods are not in transit. Next, rights of resale. Num uh, third rights of the seller or uh, of an unpaid seller is pwede niyang ibenta ulit. Kailan magiging available ang rights of resale? The buyer has defaulted in the payment of the price. So, hindi nakapagbayad si buyer. Two, the seller has the right of land or has stopped the goods in transito. Ibig sabihin, merong stoppage in transito na nangyari. So, with that, kapag may stoppage in transito, yung ownership is marerevest dun sa seller. And then, si seller ngayon, meron na actual possession of the goods. So, pwede niya na yung ibenta sa iba. Okay, next, number three. Title to the goods has passed on to the buyer. So, dito class, rights of resale, kapag hindi nakapagbayad si buyer, pwede daw si seller, pwede niya daw ibenta doon sa iba. So, ang title to the goods has passed on to the buyer. Number four, the grounds must be any of the following. So, number one, the goods are perishable. So, dito class, hindi nakapagbayad si buyer, right? Eh, what if yung goods is perishable? Just like, ah, uh, karne. So, hindi siya pwedeng madelay, di ba? Kasi nga, uh, madaling masira. So, si seller now, can resale uh, yung goods dun sa ibang buyer. B, the seller has expressly reserved the right to resell the goods in case the buyer should make default. So, ibig sabihin ng reserve, nakalagay doon sa kontrata ni seller at saka ni buyer na the seller has the right to resell the goods kung si buyer is hindi makapagbayad. C. The buyer has been in default for unreasonable time. And, how resale is made? So, paano nangyayari? So, mag magkakaroon lang lang ng uh, resale kung the seller may resell the goods in a, in a public or private sale. He is bound to exercise reasonable care in judgment in making the resale. He cannot directly or indirectly buy the goods. So, take note class kung how resale is made is pwede sa public or pwede private sale. Effects of resale. The seller is not li be liable to the original buyer upon the contract of sale or for any profit made by such sale. So, di ba class, ibinenta na seller kay original buyer and then ibinenta ni seller sa ibang buyer is because si ba original buyer nag-default ng payment. So, any profit made by seller on the second sale hindi bound si seller na magbigay ng profit kay original buyer or di kaya si original buyer is not uh, hindi siya entitled sa profit na nagawa ni seller dun sa second sale number 2 he may recover damages from buyer for any loss occasioned by the breach of contract of sale so dito class sa number 2 <coughs> Kapag uh, rights of resale ang pinili ni seller, let's say for example, uh, 1,000 sacks of rice <clears throat> at 2,000 pesos per sack. So, that is all in all 2 million. Naintindihan? And then, what if uh, hindi nakapag, hindi natuloy si buyer na bilhin yung goods? Ang mangyayari niyan, si seller has the right to resale. Pwede niyang ibenta dun sa iba. What if yung pinagbentahan is just only 1,900,000? So, lugi na dun si seller, right? Kasi kapag binili ni original buyer, ang, ang sale will be 2 million. E, ibinenta ngayon sa ibang buyer, 1,900,000 na lang. So, merong a deficiency na 100,000. So, yung 100,000 daw class, pwedeng i-recover ni seller 
sa original buyer by way of breach of contract of sale. Next, number three, the new buyer acquires a good title against the original buyer. <clears throat> And number four, importance of notice to the original buyer. Dito class, sa uh, letter D, uh, dapat, before mag-exercise ng rights of resale si seller, kailangan niyang magbigay ng notice sa original buyer. So, sabi sa batas class, Article 15.33, <clears throat> Notice need not be given to the original buyer of the intention to sell the goods for the validity of the resale. So, yung validity ng resale class, pwedeng hindi na ipaalam kay original buyer. However, if the basis of the resale is not the perishable nature of the goods or upon the express provision of a contract of sale, The giving or failure to give notice shall be relevant in any issue involving the question whether the buyer has been in default for unreasonable time before the resale was made. So, dapat class, uh, importante yung notice na mabigay kay original buyer. It is not likewise essential to the validity of the resale that the notice of the time and place of such resale should be given to the seller to original buyer. So, ang sabi sa next paragraph ng Article 1533, so yung time and place, pwede hindi na ipaalam kay original buyer. As long as yung important doon is mabigyan mo ng notice si original buyer as to the rights of resell. <clears throat> number 4, rights. Number 4, right of the unpaid seller is to rescind the sale or pwede mong i-cancel yung sale. <clears throat> So, kailan magiging available yung rescission? This right is available to unpaid seller when the following requisites are present. So, ang rescission daw class is magiging available lang kung kompleto ito. Number one, the buyer has defaulted in the payment of price. So, ito yung pinaka-importante. Walang hindi nakapagbayad si buyer. Two, the seller has the right of lien or has stoppage stop the goods in transit So, merong lien or merong right. Number three, title to the goods has pa passed on to the buyer. And number four, the grounds must be any of the following. Number one, the seller has expressly reserved the right to rescind the sale in case the buyer should make default. So, ibig sabihin dito class, uh, nakalagay dun sa kontrata ng seller at saka ni buyer na Uh, si seller has the right to rescind the sale kung si buyer mag-default ng payment. Letter B, the buyer has been in default in the payment of the price for unreasonable time. How rescission is made? So, number one, magkakaroon ng rescission by giving notice to the buyer of the intention to rescind. So, sabihan mo si buyer na i-cancel na, na lang yung kontrata or the contract of sale. Number two, by doing an overt act manifestation to the intention to rescind the sale. So, that is according to Article 1534. So, that, sabi ng Article 1534 class, it is not necessary that such overt act be communicated to the buyer, but the giving or failure to give notice shall be relevant in any issue involving the question whether the buyer has been in default for an unreasonable time before the right of rescission was asserted. So, dito sa number 2 class, uh, overt act class ha, hindi overreact. So, ibig sabihin ng overt act kasi is, uh, tanungin mo si buyer, bakit hindi siya nakapag-bayad on time. So, kapag walang mabigay na good result si buyer, so, you can rescind the sale. Next, effect of rescission. The seller shall not be liable to the buyer upon contract of sale. He may recover the buyer from buyer damage for any loss occasioned by the breach of contract of sale. So, gaya dun sa example ko kanina class na uh, nagkaroon ng profit si or di kaya nalogi si uh, seller dun sa second sale. So, pwede niyang i-recover yung loss kay original buyer. <clears throat>